Hey everyone, this is EpicsRS doing episode 4. I am Aeon Knight of the Terranus server. And I am Valinette of the Terranus server of the guild Gold Titans. So today we're going to be continuing on with a few more gold making tips. Um, one thing we highly recommend, especially if you're going to be going for the gold cap, which is like 214,000 gold. We highly recommend picking up an authenticator because they're great to making sure that your account is secure and safe. Because, I mean, we all hate hackers, right? Right. Yep. The last thing we want is for all of our stuff that we've wor worked so hard to earn to suddenly get stolen and vendored off somewhere else, or lose all the epic gear that we've you know worked so hard to attain. Yeah, and then even if you know you don't think you have anything, it can affect your guild and your friends because um, we had uh, a couple people get hacked, and they had a lot of access to our guild bank. The hacker pretty much made a clean sweep of the guild bank and. It was kind of devastating, not just for the person who got hacked, but for everyone else. Please, we highly recommend picking up an authenticator. They're not expensive. You can even get the free mobile one that you can add on to your iTouch or your, your iPhone. iPhone. So, or the Droid. Or the Droid. Yeah. So, by all means, you know, pick one up. It's for your security and so that, you know, you won't have to worry about anything. Yep, even if you, you know, have a really cheesy password. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about how to prepare for Cataclysm with these gold making tips. Um, we touched on it last episode, but definitely professions will help you because yeah. having max it means you will be able to mine or gather, sorry, gather the different types of new materials yeah. for each profession. And if you've got the crafting professions, <clears throat> the first five or ten levels, you should be able to skill up with... Lich King mats with exactly. the abyss crystals and heavy boring leather and stuff. You should be able to at least get a head start from 450 to 460. Exactly. I know we were saying don't hoard all your materials, but, you know, save enough for yourself. Yeah, right at the end. Yeah, towards the end, but don't try to, like, hoard it all right now because, honestly, it's not going to do you any good yeah. until you get to Cataclysm anyways, which is another month and a half away. Yeah, keep, keep your bag <clears throat> space free and uh, just be smart about when you start to stock up. Yeah, and then in terms of investment, I would say the Traveler's Tundra Mount is one of those mounts that you definitely should invest in. I know it's like 16,000 gold, but That's honestly... For, like, gold farmers, though. Well, either way, like I, it's a good investment regardless for the fact that you'll have reagents, you'll have your vendors with you all the time, so when you're questing, you won't have to run to an inn or run to a repair guy. You're there. Yeah. So you can, you know, get, if you're going for the realm's first, you know, level 85 tune, I highly recommend it. Yeah, those people probably already have it, though. Well, they... if they do, then great. If they don't, you know, it's something for them to pick up right now. Yeah. There are ways to get around it, but um, if you're going to be making a lot of gold, definitely try and get it. But if you're an engineer, you can use Jeeves. Yep. Uh, if you've done the Argent Tournament, you can get your squire or your argent gruntling to uh, go on an errand for you. They can go to your bank, they can go to a mailbox, and they can even go to a trader so you can sell off your grace. But uh, both of those you can only do every four hours. Yeah, so either way, it's <clears throat> if you want something that will help you in the long run, definitely Traveler Syndrome out. But if you want like you know the easier fix, which will take some time and, and doing to get, but Jeeves and the Squire are another option you may want to look into. Um, bag size, you might want to go for the max bag size that you can get right now because, I mean, it may be a little expensive right now, but there's going to be larger sizes later on. Yeah, if you get, you know, four 22 slot bags, obviously you don't need to upgrade, you know, every single one right when Cataclysm hits. You know, you'll be set for quite a few levels. But, you know, if you're still sitting with imbued Netherweave or uh, just the Netherweave 16 slots, definitely upgrade to 20-slot Frostweave because they're pretty cheap now Yeah, since most people have it already. Or if you're rich, you can go for the Gigantic bag. Yeah, <laughs> or the 22-slot the Glacial bag. Or uh, the rating. Harris Pilton's Portable Hole. 24-slot. <laughs> Yep. So, I mean, um, the Gigantic bag has an achievement, so it may change. It may not, but it's something you might want to look into. Wasn't that the BC into. one? 
Yeah, that was BC. And then for Lich King, they added the 24 portable the, hole. Yeah, the portable hole. So they'll probably Harris add Belton. a 26 with Kata and yeah. keep the other ones there. So. But you never know. Blizzard is unpredictable at this point. Yeah, so. they like to go and change things from the from the past, which is kind of annoying. I've lost uh, quite a few achievement points because they've uh, retroactively changed things. Yeah, but it's within their rights. Yeah, oh well, the, the the other thing why we're suggesting getting the max bag size is also preparing you for questing, so you won't have to, like, stop off to vendor off some greys or vendor some stuff that you'll deem useless or, you know, you don't want to drop, like, materials or things that you will need while questing later on. Yeah, I'm sure, Aeon, you remember uh, being a lobby and, you know, only having two eight-slot bags in your backpack and every ten minutes running back to the inn. Or just deleting stuff out of my bag yeah just to save time and effort yeah so i I am from those old kind of games where you needed every cent to get you know the good item from the vendor kind of like balter's gate you pick up everything every five minutes you run back and sell it and then you go and pick up what you didn't pick up before and you run back and sell it so i do that with wow um but having more bag space you don't have to run back as often yeah, and now sometimes things uh, will disappear faster. So it, that whole, you know, loot what you can, then go vendor it off, then come back again may not be an option either. Yeah. So Although, unless you can get flying, you might be able to pull it off. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Depending on how far the nearest vendor is. But yes, definitely Traveler Syndrome out. Highly recommended. I, like I said, I picked up my second one for my Druid. Oh, some other news. Uh, I just picked up the Headless Horseman, uh, Horseman mount on my Death Knight, so I will be releasing a video about that, or now showing that. Now he's got two Headless Horseman mounts, <laughs> and Valinette, all she needs is the Hollowed Helm. That's all she wants. <laughs> that will finish the Hollowed achievement, the uh, meta, and it will finish the World Events meta, and to get the Violet Proto Drake. Yeah, he... Uh, I don't care about the mount at this point. Yeah, he doesn't care about the mount at this point. The Violet Proto Drake is one of those sought-after mounts that everyone wants yeah. and is trying hard to get. And they'll give me master riding for free, 310 flying speed. Yes, yes. And other things, uh, That's that brings up another point. Um, if you want to pick up 310 speed now, you can definitely buy it. Yep, 5K. 5K if you're buying it from Dalaran. Yep. 4K if you're just going to go to Borean Tundra. If yeah, you're... Yeah, if you've got the reputation, yeah, maybe exalted. a little more 4K if you're not exalted, yeah. but, you know, either way, it's it's still a good investment if you know you're nowhere close to getting the 310 mount. Yeah, if it's going to take you another year and a half to work that out, you know, you can make 5K 50 times over in a year and a half, so might as well get it. Yeah, I mean, I gave you my uh, gold-making stats on my character's last episode, I've definitely made 5k how many times over for uh, for just three tunes only, and okay. I still have a lot more uh, alts. How many of those have epic flying? Uh, all three. Okay. All three have epic flying already. So. And then your fourth 80 is just kind of waiting around. Uh, he's, just, he's on the back burner. He's my hunter. I just play him more for PvP, so I don't necessarily need to have like him right at you know yeah. high flying speed, because he's... he's not, not a really gatherer. Either. Yeah, he's not really a gatherer. He's just yeah. more for PvP fun. And it's funny though. Uh, my first tune I got to 80, my warrior, got epic flying first because you know he was the first one there, so it's the only one to put it on. Then uh, I switched to Valnet as my main and made enough gold, so bought epic flying because I needed to get around places and I was doing a lot of questing. But now my gathering tune is my paladin, my inscriptionist herbalist. And he's the only one without epic flying. So I'm going to pick that up uh, in the next couple days. Got to transfer some uh, gold over to him so he can do it. But then I'll actually be able to fly around at uh, 300% speed with the Crusader's Aura. Mm -hmm. And pick up herbs pretty quick. Yep. Especially with the Flying Broom. Yes. Since it is instant cast mount. Yes. So you can do it while falling. But you can't do it in combat, obviously. Yep. One of the great... Portable mounts. <laughs> yeah. Only lasts until the end of... Uh, Hollow's End. Yeah. Well, but... some some will still last longer because they have like a 14-day um, duration. Yeah, so if you get it on the last day, it'll last 14 days after so you, you got, get it. So you got two weeks pretty much after. So I guess 
right now that just ends the general gold making tips for preparing for Cataclysm. So let's move on to our next topic, which is BlizzCon 2010. Yes, 2010. Fifth BlizzCon ever. Um, I was fortunate enough to buy the virtual ticket, uh, mostly for the uh, in-game pet. <laughs> I was poor. Yeah. Still so am. <laughs> I was able to watch the Friday events, the opening ceremony, and uh, a little bit of each of the uh, tournaments. But Saturday, I was working, so I didn't get to take advantage of my purchase. Um, but Friday, I saw the opening ceremony, the speeches from uh, the president, I think. Um, talked about what being a geek was. It's pretty nice. Um, made everyone feel very uh, uh, community-based. Then I watched a little bit of the Warcraft 3 uh, tournament. That was pretty fun because I've never really seen Warcraft 3, even though I've played a lot of Blizzard games. Just uh, never really played the RTS ones until I picked up StarCraft 2. So I watched the StarCraft 2 tournaments. That was pretty intense. They're very, very good, uh, very quick. And then the uh, most exciting one was probably the World of Warcraft tournament because uh, it was 3v3 arenas. And actually, the first uh, arena game that they had halfway through DC'd. <laughs> yeah, they had a server lag, and they had to restart the first match. It was hilarious. So each team knew what the strategy was for the other team. And so Made they the had battle to... even much harder for Yeah, them. but uh, uh, there's one of the teams, I think uh, MLS, uh, was able to take out AAA because they knew the strategy a little bit better. And then um, they did a second match uh, on a different level. And it was funny because they both kind of, at the same time, both teams pulled away, stopped, and drank water. And then, okay, both teams are ready, and then basically started over again. <laughs> so the, the match lasted like 15, 20 minutes. It was insane. That's when you know you got epic healing. Yeah, there was a few times, oh shit, that dude's going to die, 17k crit. Oh, okay. Uh, we're still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of strategy you can learn if you guys like PvP, watching the uh, the pros play. Um, a lot of things I learned from Line of Sight, which I'm going to uh, relay to my team. Cause, um, Meaning that's, me. Yeah. <laughs> Line of Sight's very important, especially you got casters on either team. Um, or even melee I mean, warriors like to charge. You know, if you can stay out of Line of Sight, then... You know, you're good to go. And I'm pretty sure some of these, the, the best scenes are probably still on YouTube. So if you missed it or want to see it, there are going to be some glimpses on YouTube. Don't know for... Melee I mean, warriors like to charge. You know, if you can stay out of line of sight, then, you know, you're good to go. And I'm pretty sure some of these, the, the best scenes are probably still on YouTube. So if you missed it or want to see it, there are going to be some glimpses on YouTube, don't know for how long, because sometimes Blizz has a little thing about like not showing those things. Yeah, although I was watching today the Saturday events, uh, dance contest and the costume contest. Those are on YouTube as uh, small chunks and as um, big segments. So if you want to see the whole thing, it's currently on there. So maybe try to find it quickly. But uh, little bits of it might be on there later. So Val, what were your favorite costumes? Um, There was a... Warcraft 3, uh, Witch Doctor, that was pretty cool. Um, had a, this crazy staff with a skull and a snake on it. It was pretty awesome. And then the uh, second place winner was my favorite, although he kind of cheated, so that's why he didn't win. <laughs> he was uh, Illidan Storm Rage, so he had the uh, two war glaives. He had the horns on his head, uh, and then he had giant wings. But the where he cheated was... He had an assistant walking behind him the whole time, and the assistant would pull the strings and make the wings open and close, open and close. So it was basically two people for one costume. So, Which is not allowed. Yeah, so he had an epic costume, but it was two people. Um, the person who 